Here at legendsofamerica.com is a story entitled The Tragic Story of the Donner Party, written by Kathy Weiser. And Ms. Weiser begins. On April 16th, 1846, nine covered wagons left Springfield, Illinois on the 250 mile journey, I'm sorry, the 2500 mile journey towards California in what would become one of the greatest tragedies in the history of westward migration. The originator of this group was a man named James Fraser Reed, an Illinois businessman, eager to build a greater fortune in the rich land of California. Reed also hoped that his wife, Margaret, who suffered from terrible headaches, might improve in the coastal climate. Reed had recently read the book, Emigrant's Guide to Oregon and California, by Lensford W. Hastings, who advertised a new shortcut across the Great Basin. This new route enticed travelers by advertising it would save pioneers 350 to 400 miles on easy terrain. However, what was not known by Reed was that the Hastings route had never been tested. Written by Hastings, who had visions of building an empire at Sutter's Fort, now Sacramento, it was this falsified information that would lead to the doom of the Donner Party. Reed soon found others seeking adventure and fortune in the Wild West, including the Donner family, the Graves, the Breens, the Murphys, the Eddies, the McCutcheons, the Keysburgs, and the Wolfingers, as well as seven Teamsters and a number of Bachelors. The initial group included 32 men, women, and children. With James and Margaret Reed were their four children, Virginia, Patty, James, and Thomas, as well as, Margaret, as, well as Margaret's 70-year-old mother, Sarah Keyes, and two hired servants. Takahama Olson, too, with a super chat. TO2 says, no kitten, no chook, no rabbit, no kids, and this spouse has left the house. I'm here all alone. We're with you, TO2. We are with you. Thank you. Though Sarah Keyes was so sick with consumption, she could barely walk. That's the grandmother. She was unwilling to be separated from her only daughter. However, the successful Reed was determined his family would not suffer on the long journey. As his wagon was an extravagant two-story affair with a built-in stove, spring-cushioned seats, and bunks for sleeping. Taking eight oxen to pull the luxurious wagon, Reed's 12-year-old daughter Virginia dubbed it the Pioneer Palace Car. Thank you, Zacchaeus Hundley, for the super chat. Zacchaeus says it is lit. Thank you, Zacchaeus. In nine brand new wagons, the group estimated the trip would take four months to cross the plains, deserts, mountain ranges, and rivers in their quest for California. Their first destination was Independence, Missouri the main jumping-off point for the Oregon and California trails. Also in the group were the families of George and Jacob Donner. George Donner was a successful 62-year-old farmer who had migrated five times before settling in Springfield, Illinois, along with his brother Jacob. Obviously adventurous, the brothers decided to make one last trip to California, which unfortunately would be their last. With George were his third wife, Tamzine, their three children, Frances, Georgia, and Eliza, and George's two daughters from a previous marriage, Elitha and Liana. Jacob Donner and his wife Elizabeth brought their five children, George, Mary, Isaac, Samuel, Lewis, as well as Mrs. Donner's two children from a previous marriage, Solomon and William Hook. 
Also along with them were two Teamsters, Noah James and Samuel Shoemaker, as well as a friend named John Denton. At the bottom of Jacob Downer's saddlebag was a copy of Lensford Hastings' Emigrant's Guide, with his tantalizing talk of a faster route to the Garden of the Earth. Ironically, on the very day the Illinois party headed west from Springfield, Lansford Hastings prepared to head east from California to see what the shortcut he had written about was really like. Notice here's where they started in Independence. And looks like it stops right about here. The wagon train reached Independence, Missouri about three weeks later, where they resupplied. The next day, May 12th, 1846, they headed west again in the middle of a thunderstorm. A week later, they joined a large wagon train, captained by Colonel William H. Russell, that was camped on Indian Creek, about 100 miles west of Independence. Along the entire journey, others would join the group until its size numbered 87. Thirteen days later, the train was held for several days by high water at the Big Blue River, near present-day Marysville, Kansas. It was here that the train would experience its first death, when Grandmother Sarah Keyes died and was buried next to the river. After building ferries to cross, the party was on their way again, following the Platte River for the next month. Along the way, William Russell resigned as captain of the wagon train, and the position was assumed by William Boggs. Encountering few problems along the trail, the pioneers reached Fort Laramie just one week behind schedule on June 27th, three days from now. At Fort Laramie, James, James Reed ran into an old friend from Illinois by the name of James Kleiman, who had just traveled the new route eastward with Lansford, Hast with Lansford Hastings, the eminent author. Kleiman advised Reed not to take Hastings' route, stating that the road was barely passable on foot and would be impossible with wagons. Also warning him of the great desert in the Sierra Nevadas. Though he strongly suggested that the party take the regular wagon trail rather than this new false route, Reed would later ignore his warning in an attempt to reach their destination more quickly. Talk about a fool. You gotta listen to counsel. Joined by other wagons in Fort Laramie, the pioneers were met by a man carrying a letter from Lansford W. Hastings at the Continental Divide on July the 11th. The letter stated that, the ha that Hastings would meet the emigrants at Fort Bridger and lead them on his cutoff, which passed south of the Great Salt Lake instead of detouring northwest by way of Fort Hall, present-day Pocatello, Idaho. The letter successfully allayed any fears that the party might have had regarding the Hastings cutoff. Of course, it has to be sure if you see it in writing, even if it's on the internet. On July 19th, the wagon train arrived at Little Sandy River in present-day Wyoming, where the trail parted into two routes, the northerly known route and the untested Hastings cutoff. Here, the train split, with the majority of the large caravan taking the safer route. The group, preferring the Hastings cutoff, elected George Donner as their captain, and soon began the southerly route, reaching Fort Bridger on July the 28th. However, upon their arrival at Fort Bridger of Lensford Hastings, there was no sign, only a note left with other immigrants resting at the fort. Then it indicated that Hastings had left with another group, 
and that later travelers should follow and catch up. Jim Bridger and his partner, Louis Vasquez, assured the Donner Party that the Hastings cutoff was a good route. Satisfied, the emigrants rested for a few days at the fort, making repairs to their wagons and preparing for the rest of what they thought would be a seven-week journey. <laughs>